plaintiff, Violet Ward, says the defendant is her daughter. And at the age of 16, she started running away. Violet claims one time the defendant didn't come home. And she discovered she was a victim of sex trafficking. She's suing her daughter for emotional distress. Defendant Sylvia Isituno was in and out of foster care as a child because Violet neglected her. And she insists she had no idea she was going to be the victim of sex trafficking when she ran away. Sylvia's countersuing for emotional distress. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Okay, Your Honor. Um, May 1st of 2008, her father went to jail in December of 08. Her father? Yes, mm -hmm. my ex-husband. December of 08, he was deported back to Guatemala. In February of 09, he was murdered. Mm. In was, Guatemala? Yes. And I was grieving in my own way, and I was going through a lot of things, you know, at that time. And I was drinking, and I was just going through a lot of things at that time. Um, fighting, going in and out of jail. Um, after a couple years, I realized... How old were you? I was about 28 years old. Oh, okay, yeah. And so, at that time, I realized after a couple years, I needed to straighten out that my kids were more important and I needed to become a better mother because that route wasn't helping me yeah. any. It wasn't doing me any good. Mm -hmm. So then after that, um, I tried to become a better mom. And and when I was trying to become a better mom, as Sylvia got older, when she turned 16, she kept running away from home. And she kept running away. And then until one time she was she didn't come home. And it took a, a while that for a while she was gone. And I was up day and night worrying, crying, wondering if like she was OK or dead out in the street or, you know, if she was eating. And How old was she when you uh, decided to change your life around? I would say about 12. OK, so for the first 12 years, she saw you living a destructive lifestyle. Yes. She was neglected. But, well, her dad died when she was eight. We're talking about uh, your participation and what you did and yeah. how it would affect her. Right. Um, so you went downhill, understandably so. Um, if for someone who doesn't know what else to do in terms of grief counseling or other ways, understandably so you went downhill. But you going downhill also allowed her to go the wrong route as well. So I guess that's what I'm getting to there. It's only four years between the time you turn your life around and the time she started running away. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if she was three or four when you were living a destructive lifestyle. No, she saw you. And that has an effect on children when they see mama or daddy living a destructive lifestyle and they know it's wrong. So I don't know what else might have been going on to have her run away. I'm allow her to tell me some things. What do you want to tell me, young lady? Um. Well, when my dad passed away, it was hard on me. Mm -hmm. Um, cause like he was like my best friend, and like um I did run away. Sorry, I did run away because I felt like I had no one there, like. My mom was drinking, partying. We were in and out of foster homes. And when my mom was drinking and partying. How many foster homes did you go to? Um, well, even when my dad was alive, we were going to foster homes. So I'd say basically all the way till I was like 16 years old, um, we've been going in and out of foster homes. Um, I did run away when I was 16, but I ran you away. You were eight when your dad passed, right? Yes. So but, what'd you do between eight and 16? Well, my mom was drinking and partying mm -hmm. and all that. So I had me. It was just basically me, my brother and my sister. We would be out on the streets. Um, yeah, we had a home, but guys and all that would come in and out because my mom was like drinking and partying because like my mom said, she was grieving in her own way. And when and you and your brother saw all this going down. Yes. And when they did come in on um, the house, like there was like guys that would kind of like touch on me and like I've 
did want to tell my her mom. Her friends would touch on you? Yes. And um, I did want to tell my mom, but it was hard because my mom was drinking and all that. So I didn't know how to really go to her about that. And then after that, um, when my mom did change up when I was 12 years old and she started doing better, she met a guy, but I know, like, I feel like my mom, like how I feel, I feel like my mom changed, like, more for, because she met a guy more than she did for us, which I know she was changed for us, but I just felt like just because she met him, like, she changed, you know? And so when that happened, and my mom did start acting up, I did run away, but I felt like, because it was kind of, like, a little late, like, I felt like I had no one that was really there, you know? And that's true, like, seeing her go through the things that she was going through and all that, and me seeing that as a little girl like who was I to really run to and so I did run away I felt like being out on the streets was because I lived all that my whole life like going out on the streets what point were you trying to make um about her running away or her doing anything wrong what, what's your point the the thing of it is is she ended up being sex trafficked mm -hmm. and that's what really really hurt me was when I found out that she was being sex trafficked. And that gave me a big wake up call, you know? Um, and when I heard about what she had gone through and I realized that, you know, my kids needed to come first before anything. How old was she when you finally realized that? How old? 15. She was 15 before you realized your children need to come first. Yeah. Anything you want to dispute that she alleged? No. Okay. All right. So your friends touched on her. She was subjected to foster care homes in and out for her first 16 years. And so what is your emotional distress for? <laughs> Just for the sex trafficking, the worrying that I had to go through, like, For what she went through after 16 years of neglect and abuse, you want 5000 Because it hurts your feelings that you partied and drank your way all the way up through her age 16, had her in all these foster care homes. What did you expect? She was going to be a, uh, a saint? What did you expect would happen, man? I don't understand why parents think they can do all this thing, these things too in front of and otherwise with their children and think that their children are just going to be perfect citizens. No, your children are going to live destructive lives. They don't know anything about how to live a, a proper life. They're open to all the negative influences in the world. Why? Because I'm being neglected. I'm being subjected to foster home after foster home. My mother's friends are molesting me. All of those things are reasons that she should get some emotional distress. Let me hear from you, ma'am. Your mother wants you to give her $5,000 for the things that she went through. Mm -hmm. What does she took you through? You think she deserves it? No. All right. Your counterclaim is 5000 You tell me why you think you deserve the 5000 I feel like I deserve the 5000 because all the I had no parents that was there for me. After my dad passed away, my mom, like she said, was grieving in her own way, and I felt like she wasn't there. And I felt like I was basically living, like, <clears throat> raising my own self. Um, and I feel like I just, I had no parents. I felt like I had no parents. Like, I lost my mom after my dad passed in. What has happened in the last three years with you and your mom? Um, in the last three years? Mm -hmm. um, Since you were 16, you're 19 now. Oh, so when we were, when I was 16, um, me and my mom, um, we did, when she met the guy, um, and she did start changing her act, um, me and my mom, we started talking and like getting close again. Mm -hmm. Um, I forgave my mom for the things she did because she's my mother mm -hmm. and I didn't want to hold things against her. And so I felt Wish like- Wish she would be so nice instead. She won 5,000 out of you. Go ahead. And so I felt like that's the reason why I feel like I deserve that because of the things I've been through and, and that I had nobody. And she wants to sue you for sex trafficking. 
Uh, you had any comments about that? Um, yes, when I was. Instead of suing the self-trafficker, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, she wants to sue you. Yeah, when I um, victim, right. ran away, um, yes, I was in sex trafficking, mm -hmm. but when I ran away, I didn't know that I was going to be put in that predicament. I was dating a guy, um, and when I was dating the guy, I thought he was my boyfriend. I He kind of played with my head, and when I did end up in Milwaukee, um, it was his brother, his older brother, that tried to sex traffic me, but I didn't. I didn't know that I was going there for that. And when I did end up in there and I did end up getting sex trafficked and I did realize what they were trying to do, I did get myself out of that situation. I ended up calling a friend and I got out of it. Ma'am, this is pretty odd. I gotta tell you, you coming to sue her for being a victim of sex trafficking and all the other things, you want her to pay you for what happened to her, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, it bothered, because it stressed you out that she was a victim of sex trafficking. So not the guy, did you ever go after him? Yeah. And got, what happened? He got 20 years. Ma'am, this is pretty much ridiculous and you, you should be ashamed of yourself. You want emotional distress because she was sex trafficked and it stressed you out all while you were neglecting and your friends abusing her sexually, all while she was in and out of all these foster care homes. And for all of that, you think you deserve some money from her for stress. It is unbelievable. Emotional distress for you, ma'am. The reason I was asking about those last three years, because that's about the time frame I can deal with with regard to emotional distress. I can't go back to your childhood and say these are the things that happened. So therefore, judge, if it was something in the last three years, yeah, I could have considered it and we'd have delved into it. Uh, but yeah, this has been some years ago. I'm proud. You seemed very well adjusted. And I'm proud that you were able to escape that situation, but I'm not going to be able to give you um, a judgment because it was, once again, beyond three years. And I only had to tell you what's going to happen today. You sound crazy. You're not thinking right. How, how about we say it like that? So I'm going to dismiss your claim and dismiss yours and you all stay positive, stay mother and daughter and keep moving forward. Once again, have a good day. Both places dismissed. I love you, mom. I love you too, Sylvia. So yeah.